Hey, welcome back. You look good today. This is Shonen Chumps, <laughs> the anime show podcast where we talk about anime. As usual, we will be discussing a series today, and that is Cowboy Bima. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. As we know, this is a classic. Our first classic. Our first classic oh, that no. we are discussing on the no, show. No, that's not true. Well, our first classic series, yeah. Yeah. We, is it? Know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it definitely that's, is. That's yeah, widely yeah. considered to be possibly the best anime of all time. Anyways, as always, my name's Brennan. I'm Sean. I'm Dylan. And uh, let's fucking talk some anime, boys. Let's do it, guys. We watched the entire series and the movie prior to this podcast. So... Because this is a classic anime, I decided to find some topics for us to talk about. Yeah, cool. Because when an anime is like 20 years old, you start to know like generally what the main fields of discussion are. Sure. It's not like Yuri on Ice where like it's brand new. People could be talking about it for yeah. decades coming out with th- different theories. And the ideas that we have on it are brand fucking spanking new. Exactly. And maybe people haven't thought this sort of thing a million times over. Yeah. So Cowboy Bebop ran from April 1998 to april 1999 so that's like a full year of cowboy yeah, apparently we were like six yeah like five. <laughs> and sunrise was a studio that made it i believe yep in at case the, that's important at, at the end people. of every yeah. theme song the last still is oh sunrise yeah 1998, right. sunrise right okay so i want to start it off with um what did you guys know or think about cowboy bebop before you ever saw it okay yeah My- <laughs> My first ever encounter with Cowboy Bebop was seeing an AMV of Daft Punk's One More Time featuring a compilation of scenes from Cowboy Bebop cut up together, and this was probably somewhere in the early 2000s when I was a child and I didn't know anything about the internet or computers or anime. (laughs) Damn. Yeah. (laughs) And did that intrigue you? Did it make you want to watch Cowboy? (laughs) I watched that AMV like fucking 50 times because I was like, whatever's happening on screen is the nicest thing I've ever seen in my life. Nice. But I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, Dylan? Zero. Nothing. I had not seen it, like a trailer, an image. I knew nothing about this show. At, At all? Zero. Even the name? No. Really? Oh shit. Well I know I oh I've heard people say like you should really watch Cowboy Bebop, it's good. Yeah. But just but I like didn't your... know anything. And I didn't want to know anything. You know, it's better <laughs> to go on cold if you can. Yeah. Right. right. So, yeah. So it. my perspective of it was that I knew it was a classic. Yeah. I knew it was something that almost everybody liked. And in my head, based on how I heard other people talking about it, it um seemed to occupy a similar space to a movie like Akira. Right, knowing yeah. that like Akira and Cowboy Bebop brought anime to the, to West. the West, it's even like if a they were, yeah, yeah, even if they weren't at the same time, even if like like, like ten years I, apart, exactly, yeah, it just like to me in my head as like history all existing in like one yeah, spot, yeah. it made it seem like those two things brought anime to the West, which is cool to know. Uh, now, after having watched the whole series and the movie, what do you think? In our typical kind of one sentence summary of what we think. Is it going to be a kind of one sentence summary, or do you it, want me to just say I don't how know I feel? If it ever is for Brennan. <laughs> I mean, we got to keep a cap, or else Brennan's yeah. going to talk for twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so keep it to one sentence. It made me want to cry. That's yeah. it. Go on. Whoa, nice. It is like no other anime I've watched. God, uh, that w- you guys were way more succinct than I thought you'd be. Because well, I want to say that I really like the show because yeah, it's unlike anything else. It's sad. It's. It's heartbreaking. It's funny. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> it's sweet. It's endearing. It's everything, man. It's it's like watching it 
I immediately understood, like, within the first episode, I was like, I get why this is a classic. It makes so much sense. Before we get into any specific topic, I just want to say, seeing the first episode, every there's been so many different analyses of the, like, just the first episode alone, and it being kind of like a staple of the series and kind of like foretelling things to come. Right. But even before seeing any sort of like <clears throat> um, deconstruction video where people tear it apart and be like, oh, this is like, it's like the flow of the show, blah, 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 whatever. The first thing that came to mind was, fuck, this show takes no prisoners. Because right off the bat, there's characters that are introduced, before you even know that it's kind of like an episodic show, that you immediately get attached to because you think they're going to have some significance later. Or like maybe that the arc of the story that you're being told isn't going to end in the next like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those characters just fucking die in the most tragic way possible. (laughs) And there's so much violence right out of the gate that actually doesn't pop up super often throughout the series. But, like, my initial impression was, like, this series doesn't hold anything back. It will go straight for your emotions and your gut and won't hold any prisoners. That's interesting. I can't say that's what I initially thought. Yeah. But what I want to move on to next is, can somebody break down the theme of Cowboy Bebop? For Um, me. Do it for me. The the theme of, of the show? Yeah. Dylan, you want to take a crack at it first? I don't know if I... Take a breath. Take a breath. Let me know. Mm-hmm. What is the theme of the seminal anime, Cowboy Bebop? Do you want me to go? Should sure, I go first? yeah. I'd say it's coping. The, like, the bottom line of the entire show, I would say, is, is coping with your life. Mm-hmm. We'll come back to this, I guess, and discuss it in greater detail, but just to gloss over it, essentially, you're going to carry that weight what that phrase means, why it's so integral to like the like the spine of this show, it's that no matter how hard you run or like how much you might try to avoid certain problems in life, and this is like I'm talking about the overarching theme that mm-hmm. maybe you can relate to your own life or to what it's generally trying to say about existing, is that the best you can always do is just to cope and right. just try to get by one day at a time one foot in front of the other kind of thing. Yeah. That was the theme that I took away. I'd say that uh, I agree with that completely. And Brennan kind of summed it up. Like I had a huge, it wasn't like necessarily, I guess I hadn't zeroed in on like the word coping for what the theme is, but I had like this huge write up, which I wrote my thoughts on on Cowboy Bebop. I'm not going to go through it all, but one of the things I I made, no, because I think we're going to dive into different topics on that. So I don't want to throw it all out there. Sure. And have a 10 minute podcast episode. <laughs> uh, but one one of the things uh, I said was that this show feels more like real life than any other like show does because these characters are so real. Yeah. And it's it's because of that that coping. They all have and 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 this is actually something I, I wrote. This is a snippet from what, something I wrote. I said, people have a past that they carry with them. It's not always on the forefront of what they're doing. And it's not always something that they're actively dealing with. But right. it does come up. And yeah. that is the way this show is structured. Because there's all these things happening. There's 25 episodes. But Spike, the main character, Spike, is not, yeah. you know, actively, you know, dealing with his his past, Julia, Vicious, in every episode. There yeah. are these moments where they, they pop up and it's it consumes him and that's yeah. what real yeah. life is. Right. Sean? It's just trying as hard as you can to forget yeah. <clears throat> the bad things that have happened in your past. But whenever they come back into your life, whether or not it's like through a harmless sentence from one of your friends, <laughs> you mm-hmm. just can't help but it consuming you for the entire day. Just thinking yeah. about something terrible that happened. Absolutely. <laughs> but even then, it's like... Every time the past of, like, any of these characters come back to haunt them, they do just take it one episode at a time, as Mm -hmm. they always have with everything else that comes up in their life. It's kind of interesting that way. Do you have a a way to summate the theme? One way that I like to think about it is that the show follows a bunch of characters that are all, like, past their prime. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's like we're getting, like, the... The, the story aftermath. after yeah. the yeah, story. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you were to think about how this would be told in maybe like a regular show, yeah. it would be the story that's told before Cowboy Bebop. So yeah. what Spike was doing, what Jet was doing, what Ayn was doing, <laughs> and what was going on with Faye. But instead what we get is the aftermath of all that of yeah. all that and how they cope with it, how they deal with it. Right. Which mm-hmm. is like pretty seminal. 
And it's like, the thing is, each of their backstories could very well be a fleshed out, like, deep, interesting story to yeah. just to look at. Like, Spike dealing with the syndicate and being an ex-hitman. This like, is actually, y- this is my next topic, was yeah. how does the theme fit with each character? So we should talk about ne- that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dealing, first with Spike. Yeah. What were you going to say, Dylan? Well, uh, yeah, no, I was going to say, like, I, I agree with Brendan. That's another note I had. Like, this anime could have easily dived. It could have either been about Spike's past or it could have been Spike dealing with his past every episode. Like, In this could have overt. been about him clashing with the syndicate in every episode, dealing with Vicious, trying to get Julia, but it, right. but it wasn't. Yeah. Right? And that's so going interesting. back to more, like, the realism of, of, of life. Right. right. Yeah. Like, yeah, I wouldn't even say that. Or I would say definitely that the show is about coping, but a whole like flip side to the show is, is that it's about being stuck in the past. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, l- like not just like, coping because there are people they in the can't show get away from it. At the end of the day, right? You're gonna carry that weight. <laughs> there are people in the show that are coping, and then there are blatant characters in the show that are stuck in the past. Right. Yeah. And are like coping in almost the worst ways or the best ways at points. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with Spike, Spike is like an ex hitman type person involved in like all this gang warfare and it's so strange to think of him as that because he's so aloof yeah his gang is called the syndicate the yeah, red, the red dragon, dragon Syndicate. oh yeah the red dragon syndicate yeah uh he was like partnered up with vicious yeah who was his they like, used to be best pals they were like yeah partners in this syndicate and then he fucked his girlfriend killing people <laughs> yeah but then eventually spike falls in love with uh vicious's Ju- girlfriend julia. whose name is julia yeah. and that like splits him and vicious apart and causes spike to eventually leave the syndicate i think among other things split apart because it, it seemed that like they had different viewpoints right about yeah, the direction to... and either of them could have been the heir to the syndicate and they had very different that's opposing the thing, views on the direction throughout of just julia yeah no throughout the show like they never explicitly tell it to you but it's like vicious is trying to like vie for power and like overthrow the current regime of the syndicate and like i guess that might have been his goal back then Mm -hmm. maybe spike was like i don't want to fuck with the food chain i just want to get out of this right you know but that's the thing it's like kind of left up in the air Mm -hmm. which i really like and so the way that like spike fits into the theme is that he just can't let go of that past and he can't let go of julia this girl that he left behind yeah I guess they never, or they kind of don't make it clear, like, how that'll happen. Like, the getaway from them. It's all, like, leaving Julia behind. Exactly, yeah. The the series actually starts with a shot of, like, him and I think Julia in an alleyway and, like, a rose falling on the ground. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, on the ground. Yeah. And he was hiding, like, a gun inside the the bouquet of flowers before that for his last job or whatever. Yeah, the whole show starts off with, like, alluding to what the show is actually about. And the Mm -hmm. ending credits of every episode is also that scene. Or, like, dealing with Spike and Julia. Something really funny. Seeing that, it was was weird because it made me think of mob psychos intro in the way that nothing made sense and it was like really crazy and i was like uh well i guess they'll explain this later but that never came but it's like in a completely different way where you see something and you know it's integral to the plot like in cowboy because you know this is part of the backstory of this character that we're seeing now in front of us Mm -hmm. but you just kind of assume that you're going to get some sort of resolution in that light and i guess in a way technically you do but Mm -hmm. it's not so overt where it's like this is what we meant in the beginning when we were hitting you with all these images. Uh, So I guess we should move on next to maybe the next major main character, at least that you get to meet in the show, which is Jet. Is it Jet Black? Yeah, Jet Black. (laughs) Hey, Spike. (laughs) Strong. Well done. Thank you. So Jet owns the Bebop. Like, the ship... We, oh, yeah, we should explain. Like, the Bebop is the ship that they all spend their time on in the show. Right. That's... That's Jet's ship. Wait, for anyone who's not seen Cowboy Bebop, who's watching, I mean, listening to this right now, be advised, spoilers incoming. (laughs) Also, we should kind of summate, like just summarize the show real quick. It's generally, we follow a group of bounty hunters, all with interesting individual paths, and they all live on this ship called the Bebop. Right. And they get into all kinds of wacky adventures. So it's set in, I believe, 2071. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody, or m- the majority of humanity seems to have left Earth because of some sort of, like, cataclysmic event that left every place, like, island-looking it's, and it's stuff. It's crazy, because <laughs> even even that narrative, it's, like, super subdued in the entire, like like, span of the show. Like, you get little tidbits of, like, 
what happened to Earth, and it's like the gate crisis, and it's like what the fuck are, is is anyone talking about? And then when you eventually when we when we're introduced to to Edward for the first time, we kind of get a look at what's happening on Earth. It's like everybody's in space in in our like solar system, sure, but like why? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. we see that it's constantly being barraged with like meteors and they only reveal that later that, yeah, that's yeah. like way at the end yeah. like you get when we meet edward we get a bit of it and yeah. then we when we dive into phase past we get a, even yeah. more but i i don't even recall until like one of the last episodes them overtly saying like earth is constantly being hit by meteors like, <laughs> yeah that's the fey episode yeah 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 it's 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 yeah it's really late uh so what i was gonna say is uh, I mentioned to you guys uh, before, like, I, I, I kind of wrote, like, a, a big paragraph on my impressions, and, and I'll kind of share them, I yeah. guess, throughout. But the last line, after all the stuff about what the show means or what I, what I thought about it, yeah. is one sentence saying, also, would have liked to have heard more about the incident on Earth. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, I, I was like, what is it exactly? Right. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely interesting, but what's also interesting about it is how people are now on Mars. They're yeah. on mm-hmm. Titan, the moon. Yeah. Right. Earth, or sorry, Mars is now kind of like Earth, yeah. right? It's like more like, or less. Yeah. And uh, before we move on to talking about the characters again, I want to bring up how like the creator of the show, or the director of the show, sorry, yeah. talked about how he didn't want to make it seem like a, like Earth was still a bunch of nations, or that there's a bunch of nations right, everywhere. He yeah. wanted to make it seem like nobody really belongs anywhere anymore. Everything is fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got that. Yeah, definitely. I'd say so yeah, exactly. Like just in a sense, like everybody's like. Sp- like everybody is like wandering their own cowboy, hunter, yeah, yeah, just like wandering around the universe. Space just really like... is the Wild West at that point. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Should we we should explain that they're cowboys because they're bounty hunters. Yeah. You said they're bounty hunters, but I guess like cowboy bounty hunter. Everybody, yeah. yeah, they're referred to often as cowboys. And... Yeah. But yeah, overall, there's like a just like a state of lawlessness and mm-hmm. everywhere, kind of like disorganized yeah like, where no organization where like, if, like, if a bunch of people are having a drink at a bar and then suddenly everybody starts shooting each other it's, it's kind of a common occurrence thing. Thing. <laughs> yeah uh we'll talk about that soon yeah <laughs> uh so back to jet, jet black yeah. the jet character black. Yeah. um yeah he's the one who owns the ship the bebop yeah uh he's a bit older than the rest of the cast he's only 35 yeah yeah <laughs> which is like really funny because you makes figure like so sad it's like ex-cop they're, they're, probably should be like 55 yeah, yeah i don't know no <laughs> yeah i'm so old 35 he's, he's old snake dude yeah might as well crawl uh, through a microwave how does he relate to the like the theme of the show just like we were describing how spike did what about jet again he's got his own past he he was a cop but he left because the force on i think it was ganymede that he was a part of um, was too corrupt and he didn't fuck with it anymore and then there's actually a whole episode dedicated to showing how he lost his arm he has a prosthetic metal arm yeah um, and he was kind of i think it was he was set up by his partner was he yeah not? yeah yeah we get like two big insights into his past yeah. one yeah. of them is like finding out how he lost his arm which is that he was set up by his partner Black yeah. Dog the other one so, yeah. yeah the great title yes um so cool another one is when it, he goes to see his like Ex-lover. ex-girlfriend yeah and he pulls out a pocket watch that she bought him, and it's broken, and it's been stuck on the same time since they last saw each other. Right. Yeah. This is like, another instance of him being a character that's stuck in the past. Heavy symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> as, like, the clock stopping as soon as he... Um, yeah. Yeah, stopped seeing her. What was what was cool about... Uh, or one thing that I liked about um, hearing more about Jet's past uh, with, his, with his girlfriend, not so much the Black Dog Serenade episode... His he was also stuck in the past uh, about a woman, right? Same yeah. as same as Spike. Spike. Mm-hmm. But Jet's reason for not being with his girlfriend or how that happened was on him, right? He she said like, "Oh, you were too controlling. Like oh, everything had to be like just your way. Like I had to live my own life." Right. Yeah. So they like they were like it was a different reason. It's I guess, heartbreaking than, when she says that. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> but I'm like I'm glad. Like, it's not the exact same. It's longing for uh, a loved one, but it's actually flipped. It's not like something bad happened to Jet in that scenario. Right. It was he was kind of, I guess... Like, because of his nature. Yeah, his it's his nature led to that. And led to him and his girlfriend, I guess, breaking up. That's part of the reason of, like, what separates the mentality of Jet and Spike. Yeah. Like, Jet just sits on his plane with his bonsai trees and yeah, kind of like trans- dwells trans- to himself and like thinks to himself whereas spike is like 
as soon as he sees a semblance of like fixing the past, he'll he's like there. Yeah, that's yeah. Why I try not to think too much. Right? <laughs> yeah, he just like does stuff. Yeah. When the black dog bites down, he never lets go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. A recovered jet. I mean, I yeah. Generally, yeah. what about? He's very stubborn. Yeah. The next character we meet, and I think like episode three or something. Yeah. Bay Valentine. <laughs> Faye Valentine. Faye. Faye Valentine. How does she fit in, Dylan? Well, she's really interesting because from, I think, the beginning... I mean, the, the show starts with a flashback from Spike. And I think we probably get the feeling that Jet has a backstory as well. Mm-hmm. But Faye's is revealed a lot later. Yeah. I guess, like, what's happening to her. We just know... We know she's in debt. And yeah. that's <laughs> it for... A, a long time. Yeah. Also, it's like when she's first introduced, and it's like that's the thing. It's because of her debt. Like the uh, like a casino mafia group comes after her, and they're like, "Hey, you can work this off." Mm-hmm. Um, but when the guy is talking about her to her, he's like, "Oh, you're the like the queen of hearts, or like the ace of hearts, or something." And like mm-hmm. you're a legendary like poker player or like scam artist and like you've been like roaming the galaxy for like a hundred years right and then she's like i'm not that old blah 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 blah. so my immediate reaction was like oh maybe she's like someone who's a capable human being who's like got skills and is like actually like tricky and sly maybe that's her character archetype right but no she's actually just like a doofus (laughs) and it's the funniest thing in the world when you realize like initially i found her like pretty annoying and like she was entitled <laughs> and so like i don't know i like uh, there was good uh banter back and forth with her and, and spike and, and jet and i, I, and I, and I liked that yeah. but overall i was just kind of like oh is is this all she is so i was really delighted to learn to learn more about her you know uh spike and jet are coping with like things that have happened in their past and they're stuck in their memories Faye doesn't have any memory of what what of who she was exactly we don't realize so that she's totally. trying to figure out wh- like who she they're like i think spike and jet and like to a certain extent like everyone's kind of trying to figure out where they fit in yeah but no one more than faye faye's trying to figure out who she is as right. well as where she fits in it's like right and there's it's impossible for her well it feels like it's impossible for her like she has no recollection it's like jet is stuck in the past and faye is stuck in the present Mm-hmm. Really wants it's to like, find yeah, out what really. happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, doesn't know where she is. Yeah. Get me out of here. Where was my it's life hundred years ago? And what you were talking about with Faye being kind of annoying uh-huh. um, makes me remember this great line by Spike once the whole crew is assembled on the ship. Yeah, he says something to Jet like, uh, "We've <laughs> we've welcomed." Everything that I hate onto the ship. Yes, exactly. I love that line. Children, 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 animals, animals and women with attitudes. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) It's fucking great. But honestly, I love the back and forth between, like, Spike and and Faye. I think it's really funny and entertaining because they get on each other's nerves so much, but they're so similar in a bunch of ways. Right. So what you were saying of, like, first seeing Faye as somebody who could potentially be somebody who has their shit together. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's the impression she gives off to everybody in the solar system that yeah, they're part yeah, of now yeah. <laughs> because she only knows them. She's the person who jumps in for an episode of Bebop and leaves. Yeah. And people just see like a day of her life and they're like, wow, what a mystical creature. She's so but cool. Yeah. We're <laughs> the ones who get to see her day to day home that she returns to all the time and right. how she wants to go do an amazing adventure. She fails on her own slowly sadly comes back to the with her tail between her legs and spike's just like what job didn't work out she's like fuck (laughs) you shut up i don't want to talk about it yeah (laughs) it's pretty great seeing like that side of her life it's It's interesting it's such an interesting mix of characters to put Mm -hmm. together and speaking of like how everybody else only sees her for a little episode of their life and then she dips yeah when she's introduced into the show you have almost no reason to think that she's not going to vanish at the end of the episode. And she does. Because she she does leave. But she comes back the next episode. (laughs) The only character that does. Yeah, right. Indefinitely. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I really liked it. Have we covered Faye? Are we going to talk about the best character in the entire series now? Faye Faye. (laughs) I mean, it's Edward, but that's my impression of her. Uh, My favorite character. I'm oh no fine. what <laughs> oh <laughs> i'm kidding uh edward let's talk about edward edward yeah um oh edward <laughs> <laughs> so edward is this little kid this girl yeah named edward with like bright very androgynous pink 
orange, hair. Orange, orange, pink, orange, pink orange hair. hair. Yeah. yeah. Who speaks it's like, in I'm not rhymes? Speaking definitively about either color of the hair because it's both at once. <laughs> um, yeah, and she's like has like a dude. She's like dressed very minimally. Has yeah. like a darker skin tone compared to like the other characters yeah. too. She mm-hmm. lives on Earth. She's from Earth. Yeah. She's Earthian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does she fit in, Brian? She is the comic relief, along with our little space dog, Ayn. I feel like we can group them together, because what does Ayn do besides play chess once in a while? But the thing is, we should talk <laughs> well, about Ed first. For like, yeah, like, I guess so, yeah, okay. way first, yeah. Well, she is one half of the comedy troupe that right. relieves us of all this heavy, depressing shit that we've got to see on a episode-to-episode basis. Yeah. I love Edward. She's so funny. Her Just the way she's animated. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> literally and figuratively speaking, <laughs> yeah, all of her physical actions are so strange and just Jeez. don't fit in to like anything else going for the tone of the show. You would think, like on paper, if someone listed all of her characteristics out to you and said, "Here's a character. Do you like this character?" I would probably say, uh, "No, I might find that annoying." Even her voice and the way she talks in rhymes and riddles and saying weird shit like Fei Fei all the time, it's endearing in a yeah. really strange way, and I love it. Yeah, they struck like a good balance for yeah. like what the character was. <laughs> Definitely. So like what about the theme of the show? Like how do you right. think she fits oh. in? So that's interesting because for a really long time, it's like she doesn't fit in because we don't know much about Ed. Yeah. Right? We see her and we know she's a computer genius. Yeah. She's and a she, hacker. She force, first of all, she forces the Bebop to be to, to let her onto the <laughs> yeah. team. Which actually, I had a question about that. Is like, is the Bebop famous? Like, how does she know? Because even when the Bebop is first coming, she's like, oh my goodness, the Bebop. Like, she's excited well, to see that. I can say right? that in later episodes in the series, we find out through people encountering Spike that right. Spike is like among the top. Bounty hunters. Bounty yeah, hunters. Yeah, like, if true. not, like, top two. Right. Like, in a later cowboy-centric episode, we find out that there's somebody who has a bounty on them, and he's like, I know who's hunting me, and it was going to be either you, Spike, or, or this other or, dude. Yeah. Blonde Spike. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about that later. Yeah. We'll talk Holy about that. Fucking uh, so, it's yeah. fair to say that the Bebop and the people on yeah. it are, like, revered across well, the solar famous. system. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so we don't really know a whole ton uh, about... Ed, Ed, yeah, and really, if you were to like, she's more of a supporting character than Faye. Like, you'd probably say that Jet, or sorry, that uh, Spike is like the lead lead. But you might say that Faye and Jet, or sorry, Faye, sorry, Spike is the lead. You might say that Faye and Jet could also be kind of lead characters. Yeah, because they're unique in their own way. Yeah, but we don't get a lot from Edward. They're she like plays really small parts in certain episodes, even, and she just pops up, and it's only later that we kind of learn about her past yeah Mm -hmm. even then she's so young that like she kind of doesn't even really have a quote-unquote past beyond the fact that Mm -hmm. her dad is like a crazy weird excavator guy who doesn't really care or think about his daughter's location or well-being to the extent where she can just go hang out at an orphanage for a while and then just leave whenever she feels like it and then run into her dad again and her him just be like oh, there you are. How have you been? Kind of thing. Like, Yeah, it's very... <laughs> there's a lot of interesting details around that. Like, he's been looking for her for seven years, apparently. Right. Um, like, when he sees her, he's like, hey, it's my son or daughter. Or uh, daughter. Whatever you are. Yeah. He, Anyways, like, I'm going to swing you around in a circle for yeah. a while. Um, <laughs> have fun. What I want to bring up is the fact that I think she plays into the story so well, and I've seen like people talk about this on the internet in like, specific videos. Yeah. Because she is a child and kind of embodies everything that the other people in the bebop want to be like spike is aloof because he's acting aloof right whereas you know the inside of his mind is always in a very specific place yeah Mm -hmm. whereas ed is truly aloof ed is like she's crazy yeah well (laughs) ed is like actually carefree and not tied down by anything right which is what it's like the most extreme version of what everybody else on the bebop wants to be yeah, yeah. but they can't be so it's almost like they keep her around to remind them remind them or show that them it's possible like, yeah that it's possible <laughs> and it's funny with all their interactions with her because they'll be talking having a serious conversation they're all like annoyed and she'll, by her <laughs> and she'll just be like I, the thing is i don't think they're annoyed by her at all i think yeah. she just like wiggles around she's like oh another game of chess yeah and they yeah. all just look at her almost like at, like shocked that somebody like her exists yeah. and then they just turn <laughs> like, back and keep anyways, having the conversation yeah, <laughs> yeah um but she's I, fascinating oh, 
I do think, though, that there is some, like, you know, maybe not as much as the other characters, but some degree of, of coping with her because, you know, she does want to yeah. find her dad at the end. Mm-hmm. Not even right? just that. She wants to find herself, which is why she, like, leaves at the end. Right. Yeah, that She doesn't too. technically know who she is. She doesn't have an identity. In right. the way that, like, her character is so, like, even, like, androgynous, it's like half the characters on the Bebop, when they first meet her they don't know what she is they can't put Mm -hmm. a finger on like like what kind of a human being are you we've never encountered anyone so crazy or skilled or like that looks like you or sounds like you or acts like you ever you're such an anomaly yeah she wants to solidify what she is right uh i don't know if you guys know this but the original design of ed as a character isn't what the finalized version is i have um it's actually it was like this little short kid in the fifth episode that steals from a shopkeeper. He steals like a nudie magazine from oh, a shopkeeper yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like friends with Spike. That's so like Spike the, like picks the up the two kids yeah. that are stealing. Yeah. Um. It's like he's like the little black character, like the little black guy. Oh no yeah. way! <laughs> yeah. So like that was the original added. design. Wow. Oh. Um. And then they changed it to Ed. I guess maybe they thought like they needed it to be quirkier. Mm-hmm. Maybe like <laughs> well, le- like Jesus, did they ever pile the quirk? Yeah, on? <laughs> like less um normal looking, like just like a regular dude. Why? Yeah. Not, why have that when we could have this weird quirky pink orange hair goggle wearing exactly yeah. hacker nut no shoe wearing yeah <laughs> types with her feet yeah oh yeah that's fucking great <laughs> all right so ein ein the dog Arf? einstein the uh the corgi the welsh corgi the queen's dog yeah the welsh corgi how does he fit in he is part of the comic relief his little space dog paddle warms my heart and it makes me very happy yeah I feel like he could have been used better because what Ayn is, is he's like a super dog. Mm -hmm. He's got human intelligence uh, because he was experimented on Mm -hmm. and he's like a data dog, quote unquote, in the way that he has a lot of sensitive information stored in his body slash brain Mm -hmm. by someone we've never encountered and never do encounter. Right. But it does come up more than once that he isn't like he has intelligence on a human level and Mm -hmm. he can communicate with the rest of the crew on like like human terms basically like if they spoke to him he would know what's going on he can play chess but that's the extent of what he does basically right like (laughs) i think it's interesting that he has this past like he fits in because (laughs) it seems like the ein tv show is the show about the dog who's as smart as a human who's experimented on and goes off on an adventure but all we find is like the version of him that's stuck in a suitcase or whatever it was yeah. and gets saved by Spike. Chucked around by onto the yeah. show. Abdul Hakim with his sick hoop earrings. Yeah, we don't really get to see him that... Like, we get a couple instances, but he's yeah. he is underutilized in terms of being a really intelligent dog. Yeah. There's an episode... <laughs> Uh, there's a uh, there uh, Edward is trying to chase the criminal and they're riding a train mm-hmm. and then a cow grows in front of the train oh, and the yeah. train has to stop <laughs> and they and, talk and then Ein <laughs> thanks the dog there's a subtitle that says like thanks it was and then, bark- the, and then the, the cow moves back and says like no problem yeah, yeah. I'm like he is a genius <laughs> yeah yeah and so is the cow <laughs> in one of the bonus bits for an episode when they're preparing for the next episode oh, yeah after that, you hear him talk he speaks English like Ein speaks English he like it's barks so- and words huh. also i think it's really funny that all of ein's barks sound like they were recorded in the exact same room no matter what environment he's in in the show yeah like just the way the audio sounds it's like he's in a closet for every <laughs> yeah it's every like place kind of bad yeah it's kind uh, of grating almost to hear him bark and it's like Ugh, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> Ayn's a great character uh yeah so i guess we've covered all the characters and how they fit into the main theme mm-hmm. of the show yeah now what i think we should move into is like a free talk about the episodes like holy shit this is an episodic show yeah 26 there episodes. are so okay well before we even do that yeah let's talk about something that we've all agreed on like really hard that this show is impossible to binge it's impossible yeah. to binge. well it's Not very well possible <laughs> it's very well possible but it's like it's grueling it's because taxing on the mind <laughs> yeah because of how much it throws at you Every single episode is like a mini movie in that it's all self-contained and there's so much information that's being given to you. When you finish an episode, it feels so satisfying because it's like, oh, that was such a nice self-contained story. But also, holy fuck, I just feel like I watched a movie. I don't want to watch three of these back to back. Yeah, right. It's it's a very, very dense show. And so that dense. makes it, yeah, it, exactly. Like you, you hit the nail right in the head. Like it's so dense and so much is coming at you. 
It's it's how do you binge it? I binged it and it was exhausting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because every episode you're meeting a yeah. new set of characters, a new scenario. Right. How are they going to solve this? And then you get like new clues about how their world works and yeah. like their society functions. It's like you're trying to call back to other episodes that might have made like subtle references. Right. It's like there's a lot going on. And and another thing uh, in the grand scheme of the plot, and this is ultimately a plus uh, for the show because of because of what the show is. Not a lot. Like nothing really changes at the end of an episode, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's a really good thing for what the show's about. But in terms of binging, it makes it impossible because it's like every episode you're back at yeah. square one, almost every episode, right? Mm. Like things don't change in this world. That's a good point you bring up. We should probably uh, talk about it now before yeah. we forget. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah, one of the reasons that that plays into what the show is about is because, like, these characters are so stuck and, like, preoccupied with things mm-hmm. that they don't grow. Like, this show yeah. is not about the characters growing. They're it's about done. them escaping with what they already are or exactly. escaping from what they already are. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. They're well past their prime. Yeah. That's the thing. We missed out on their prime. We're getting yeah. their, like, post-prime story where they're, like, literally just trying to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And try not to lose themselves in the process. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the things that I, I wanted to say was like, so these characters have such rich backstories and yet it doesn't form the plot of the show on an episode by episode basis. Mm-hmm. We get like little bits of them throughout and that itself is so realistic because like if I met you guys today, yeah. I wouldn't get your whole story all at once like the way a TV show kind of or you know some shows give you like you learn all about it. Every episode, you're learning a little bit about the person. Right, right? Yeah. That's That's like we're literally getting to know these characters as if we were just interacting with them. Like, you get these snippets about who they were. Right. Right, yeah. And you're slowly, slowly piecing together the puzzle of, of who they were. And that's another thing. So, I think this show is not character building or character progression. It's fleshing out their characters definitely yeah really so uh it's it's just like not a lot of monumental things are really happening Mm -hmm. it's like this really slow burn and the whole show you're just learning more about who each person is yeah definitely right yeah you nailed it that was yeah taken from something i I wrote like right after i finished yeah uh, the show i just like wrote a bunch of paragraphs and that was more or less uh one of them (laughs) yeah it's definitely interesting to see a bunch of characters that are all extremely selfish Stuck on a ship together. It's really funny. Yeah. (laughs) But wait, also just to add on to um, what you said about like, you know, it all coming full circle more or less at the end of every episode. Like, again, this has been a point that's been rehashed many, many times on the internet, I'm sure. But Mm -hmm. it's something that I did write down when I noticed it's that going back to the themes of like coping and like trying to like escape from your sadness. Every time they go out and they encounter something tragic, like, um, I forgot what the episode was called. I think it was um, Jupiter Jazz. It might, no, it's the one where familiar. the guy has his sister who's going blind. Oh, I wanted to talk about that. Episode and he's too. mixed yeah. up in like the mob, and he then he steals gets shot. this plant because he wants yeah, to sell yeah, it yeah. to save his sister's vision or something. It was like Venus. Oh, I don't even remember. Well, yeah. Name. Well, what but happens? What's yeah, the yeah, point? yeah. That <laughs> it's like that is just one instance of many instances like the first episode where we see like that female character who's introduced who gets along with spike a bit and then she has her tragic story and she dies at the end Mm -hmm. like our characters keep coming in contact with tragedy in the outside world but it doesn't change the fact that they always reset to how they were when the episode started like none of these tragic encounters ever change these characters for like the better or worse because They've already seen it. They've done it. They've progressed. They're done. And yeah. now they're just trying to carry their own weight and they can't let any of this outside stuff really affect them anymore. That episode is like pretty significant because mm-hmm. it's the one where like Spike gets closer to anybody that yeah. he usually does because yeah. he can like see himself in this kid. He relates, yeah. And, mm-hmm. he, and it, when the kid's dying in front of him, the kid says like... Rocco, yeah. Yeah, Rocco right. says... Do you think, like, if we met earlier in life, we, we could have been friends? Oh, my God. That was so <laughs> sad, man. Yeah. And Spike just has to straight up forget about that and move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite episodes, and I w- I really wanted to talk about to talk about that. And you're absolutely right. They kind of, they reset, and it's not like they're carrying the weight in the following episode, because they have their own... They have their own cross to bear. Cross to bear, yeah. yeah. 
But I really did, I still love episodes like that because we are seeing more, we're seeing like the sympathetic side of, of Spike. Like so much like he continues to help Rocco after they're kind of basically done. Like he shows up and Even like fights the feels, mob with him. Yeah. And then he makes sure that his sister's eyesight gets restored. Right. And then when the sister says something like, tell me the truth, like, you know, he was involved in all that bad stuff. And then he's like, you knew him. Like the truth is like he was a really good guy. Yeah, and then... And you're just like, oh my god, man. Yeah, that that's episode floored me. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot. Fuck, it's pretty great. Man, pretty this show, so sad. Yeah, I gotta say, understatement. <laughs> we were going to split this podcast up into two different podcasts. Yeah, First, we were going to do a mega show to cover all the episodes in we, a way. Yeah, we were going to talk about the first 13 episodes in the first part of the podcast, and yeah. then the next. Um, And when we did do that, so when I first watched the first 13 episodes, I was like really depressed like the show is yeah. just so depressing especially because we ended off with like the vicious spike like right, showdown yeah, yeah, yeah. like the Wait, two episode oh, showdown. Right, that yes, might have been jupiter, jupiter jazz that's jupiter jazz part one and two <laughs> right and the episode we're referring to before might and have been a waltz for venus venus waltz brendan i remember well, talking to you waltz for venus, you're right. i remember talking to you for a few minutes after watching the first 13 and yeah. being like i don't think i like the show too much <laughs> especially after because this is my second time watching it yeah yeah I just didn't feel like it was just bringing me down a lot. Right. Yeah. But then when we picked up with the second half of the series right. and they introduced like Ayn and like a bunch of, or sorry, not Ayn, um, Edward, and, like a bunch of more of the episodes with Edward, I really started to like love it again. And I realized like the whole series is fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. Oh yeah. yeah the so. series starts like the first episode by showing you the bebop, like flying through the sky and then it switches directly to being in a saloon and like a saloon shootout. Right. So it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, so cool. it's like Bebop Cowboy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like two juxtaposition, like right there in front of you. Yeah. It's pretty great. And the whole uh, veggies with no meat thing, the bell peppers with beef. Oh, with yeah. No beef. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a big point I want to say about the show is whenever they have food, it makes me want, want to food. eat. Yeah. <laughs> because they're always starving oh, and they never have right. food on the ship. So when they're like, feasting on something i feel like i've never craved food that badly like when they have a feast of eggs and they're all popping eggs into their mouths like oh yeah when... but wait that was different because spike and jet were coping with Faye and uh edward leaving yes and they're just cramming food in their mouth because they don't want to think about it i mean yeah i guess that's true but also like the shiitake mushrooms when they find right. those and like they're just the eating mushrooms the mushroom the episode is that yeah. cow episode that you mentioned earlier yeah. right? also mushroom think about something. the one episode that's like a spoof on a horror movie where they're alien? Being hunted the on alien the alien movie yeah with the flamethrower <laughs> and the motion tracker and yeah the music but, from 2001 but what's Space attacking Odyssey. them <laughs> What's attacking them? It's like it's a lobster that that, oh, yeah. that, <laughs> that Spike left in the fridge for a year. Crayfish, yeah, or yeah. or yeah, whatever. It just <laughs> became a mutant in that time. Yeah, the yeah. food, the food that they desired so much is coming to attack them. That was so funny. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That was a really good episode. Um, was there anything else that like really stood out to you beyond those ones? Any like wanna... big major episodes? Any yeah. major? Episodes? Oh, um, um, a ballad for fallen angels. Which one's that? Your first oh, interaction. Episode five. Yeah, with vicious. With vicious. Yeah, that was so the cool first... because it's the first time you get context and it reminds you, hey, wait, remember that shit with the gun and the flowers and all that that you were kind of flashed at mm -hmm. in the beginning. That has um, legs. That's yeah, going exactly. somewhere. Uh, and then we actually get like, oh, and you see how like quickly like Spike snaps into the role again once he re-encounters Vicious. It's like you see a whole different side of him where he's like right. so carefree and aloof before. And then now he's doing dodge rolls and yeah. blowing people's brains The second brains yeah. out. Vicious is mentioned, it's like a snap change in, in Spike. Yeah. I feel like it's worth mentioning the difference in weapons that they use. Yeah. Like Spike uses a gun, which is like... Quick pop pop, kill people, get out, forget it ever happened. Yeah. Vicious uses a sword yeah. or a katana, which is like slowly slice away at my enemies. Yeah. And think about it and revel in it and never forget the people I've killed. Vicious is vicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he has a weird bird. An oh, ugly right. crow thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. That sits on his shoulder. Forgot about that. And sometimes drops grenades. <laughs> Man, one of the, my favorite episodes is the one where they, f they get in, a, in the mail a beta tape. Oh, and that's they have Faye's to go. Thing, right? Yeah, they have to yeah. go to a 20th century like history <laughs> yeah. shop. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. It's like digging through. Well, what was then the present? Yeah, of like big boxy TVs and VHS players and yeah. Betamax and stuff. And someone 
being like a vintage collector, but yeah. he's like, you know, he's just talking about what was then current technology. And Spike treats his technology like shit, like the, <laughs> kicks, the beta yeah. tape keeps <laughs> skipping, so he kicks it until it breaks, like the whole VCR or whatever, beta so player. dumb. And he like puts out his cigarette on, on another VHS player. Yeah, yeah, um, us. <laughs> yeah. Just seeing that guy freak out made mm-hmm. that episode. But the end of that episode is pretty heartbreaking as well. Like you see Faye back when she had hope and happiness right. and positivity and friends. You see her leaving, like An as identity. a teenager, leaving a time capsule video to herself ten years in the oh, future. Man. It's so just the idea of a time capsule. Yeah, it's just heartbreaking in a video and her being like a cheerleader that's happy and like wait having videos of herself waking up being like how do I feel today and yeah. like what's yeah. this gonna video be diary yeah like slightly self conscious too at one point yeah like, right, oh yeah. wait no I want to get this right like yeah and then thing. her watching herself not knowing who that person is and not remembering it yeah. is like Crushing. pretty fucked up and she's not even sitting with all the guys she's like hiding and watching it because yeah. she didn't pay for the tape so yeah. she's like so you're not like, watching this yeah. <laughs> God, so it's almost like they don't know that she's watching it from the background. Yeah, and then later, a couple episodes later, she's watching it alone. Yeah. She's watching it again, and that's yeah. when we kind of dive more into her. Yeah, and then when she finally gets to her home on Earth, she like she runs into an old lady that she knows that remembers her from high school, mm-hmm. but she right. like can't she's bear. A she can't like bear to talk to her, so she runs away in the opposite direction. Yeah, when she um, sees her granddaughter. Yeah. Is like this fresh young child. And, and I think she finds like the outline of where her house used to be and where her bed was and like lies that's down. A, yeah, yeah, that's in the yeah. second last episode. Yeah. I think. Two episodes that I want to talk about yeah. that really left a huge impression on me. One's a very funny episode and the other one's a bit more serious. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll talk about the funny one first. It was called Cowboy Funk with Blonde Spike. Yeah, the cowboy guy. <laughs> that Andy. was That was fucking amazing. I was like on the floor during that entire episode. It's just so silly. The fact that they're self-aware to the point where they're like, "Are we taking this cowboy thing too far?" In the yeah. in the preview before that, <laughs> right? Um, so I should explain to everybody listening that, like, in case you forget, this episode is about Spike encountering another um, one hunter. of the like A-list bounty hunters yeah. that looks just like him but with blonde hair, and yeah. this guy's dressed as a cowboy and, and sits he on a rides horse. a horse everywhere. <laughs> yeah, even indoors. Yeah, yeah. and like on an <laughs> elevator. Um, <laughs> It's funny because Faye goes like on a on a date with him and then realizes that he's exactly like Spike. It yeah, seems like that's what like she's discovering. In her face. In yeah. And he's like cans of his own branded soup. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like <laughs> And it tastes bad. And it's funny because the the bounty in that episode is some like terrorist. A terrorist who like a terrorist who teddy blows, bear bomber. He blows up stuff because he hates consumerism and wants to get rid of these buildings. Right. And he hates people not paying attention to him. Yeah, but so he keeps no, blowing stuff up. But the no thing is, one ever talks to him or acknowledges him when he's making a big threat. Yeah, because Spike just cares about the other bounty hunter so much yeah that they're like <laughs> constantly butting heads also the fact that yeah he rides his horse indoors to like like a like a, <laughs> like the guy blows up what's like a, a fancy like dinner room on yeah. like a in like a big building somewhere mm-hmm. but this guy's just there on his horse and people are like oh, excuse me sir can you please get off your horse like yeah. how did you even get that in here <laughs> um and nobody cares and it's just funny yeah so that's a great episode Okay, so the serious episode that I wanted to mention, mm-hmm. Pierre Le Fou, I think it was called. Oh my goodness, Which one's that? that episode was terrifying. That's what the oh, crazy the laughing man. Yeah. 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 That Dude. was just visually so stunning. The action scenes, the atmosphere, all yeah. of it just fucking blew my face off. So this is when amazing. Spike fights the um the fat dude who looks like the penguin from Batman. Exactly, yeah. So like fat he's like plus, an assassin. Yeah, like penguin plus Joker. Yeah. yeah. So the beginning of that episode is really cool, the fight scene in it. Right, Because yeah. um that guy just like wombo combos Spike in the air. He just like Yo. uppercuts him and gives him like 10 he's, kicks in the he's air. he's floating, right? Yeah. So he just does his little spin every single time Spike's but, about to hit the ground. And but you just, don't see that part of the fight directly. You see him. it through a shadow on a wall. Spike getting the shit kicked out of him, getting juggled in the air. Yeah, it's fucked yeah. up, but so sick. Yeah, that villain's so scary because you find out that he's like been experimented on and his yeah. mind is constantly regressing and becoming like younger and less intelligent yeah so he's like a like a, a child in a man's body and yeah. he's constantly re-experiencing this horrible thing that happened to him and that's why he's like a nutcase but he's also the most efficient killer yeah and like kills people like no problem and has like an arsenal of weapons under his cape and they end up fighting in like this really like a carnival old, yeah, yeah like a like an amusement park that's like yeah degenerating and there's like bootleg goofy and shit and 
it's it's all really really like the imagery is just so stark and interesting and beautiful right i loved it i love how he dies because spike like <laughs> shoots him in the leg yeah or stabs him or something and he gets stepped yeah. on and <laughs> and he like cries out in pain to his mom, mom. he's like mom it hurts that's yeah. sad dude and then that he gets crushed by like a giant like parade like walking goofy. float thing yeah but, like goofy and then him. as soon as <laughs> he kills Donald him or something as soon as he kills him jet calls spike to tell him the intel and on, on the guy yeah and spike's like I don't need to hear it. Yeah, it's like, like it doesn't even fucking matter, dude. Yeah, like I've already seen all that I need to see. This guy crying out to his mom. So Another thing scary. that's crazy about that episode is there's no bounty on that guy. Spike was just playing pool. Like he was just playing yeah. pool and then he walks out and he sees Pierre Lefeu kill people and then yeah. he's like, oh, well, now I'm going to kill you too. And that's like the basis for that episode, right? And also, another interesting thing from that. it is that Spike continuously puts himself in danger. Like in this yeah. episode... He gets an invitation saying, come to the party, and he knows that he's going to have to fight this guy. Yeah, exactly. And Faye, out of everybody, even says Spike, she tries to hide the invitation from him because she doesn't want him to get hurt. Right. Because the first fight from this guy leaves him like looking like a mummy with bandages all over his body. Just like when he jumped out of the church window with a grenade and vicious. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I gotta say, one of my favorite episodes is the one where they all get high on shiitake mushrooms. Or, yeah. not, not shiitake yeah. mushrooms, but the high mushrooms, the yeah. magic mushrooms. <laughs> uh, because, like, Ein eats one, and right. he just, like, his face goes still, and he looks off into the difference, and then he starts bouncing up and down yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, just as an experiment, Edward gives the mushrooms to everybody on the bebop, and Spike starts walking up a small staircase, thinking that it's a stairway to heaven. That's yeah, endless. yeah. And he starts and talking to a frog in one place. Constantly. Yeah, he's talking to a frog, and Faye is in the washroom, thinking she's swimming through an ocean. Oh yeah, like submerged in water. And uh, Jet is just uh, talking to his bonsai trees. He's yeah, just in yeah. pure bliss, like <laughs> laughing along with his bonsai trees. It's great. It's such a natural, pure reaction. Yeah. That's good. Um, I don't know if we're done talking about any of the episodes, but I want to quickly ask you guys, like, very briefly what you think about the movie, the Cowboy Bebop movie, right. which came out in 2001, which is about right. two years after the series, the series ended. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes place around, like, episode 22 and 23 of the show. Yeah. So, one thing I, I, I'll say, because given the ending of Cowboy Bebop and the fact that this movie came out after, like, I, I know it, it takes place, yeah, between episode 22 and 23, but I, I wondered if I wanted to watch it, because I really liked the last thing that I saw from Cowboy Bebop right, yeah. being the ending that it was. Yeah. You know, Spike getting to kill Vicious. Yeah. Right. Getting to, you know, like having all that closure finally. Yeah. Getting to like, you know, stumble. And then he stumbles down those stairs and just says bang, bang. to the rest of the syndicate and then bang. falls over and that's it. Yeah. It was like a beautiful ending it was so well yeah. done yeah and so i questioned whether or not i wanted to see the movie knowing that this was afterwards was made yeah. after like i kind of wanted so that maybe to be, like, it'll my give last closure like it'll yeah. answer a question like jump in and live. say the the like bang ending yeah. Yeah. and he falls down this the floor the stairs. stairs yeah it's technically ambiguous we don't technically know what happens Here's, to spike yeah that's true yeah. but he's dead <laughs> i mean like he's been through a lot of pain okay, he gets wait. his ass kicked a ton he's, in the he's show. gonna say highly likely but yeah. i have yeah. a couple things to say about the ending and about the movie and its relation to that right so okay first of all i i read somewhere that um i don't know if it was the director i think it might have been the director of the series said whatever it is that you think happened to spike think again <laughs> Hmm. So, oh, okay. there. I mean, that's the thing. Whether he lived or whether he died, it's always it's going to be up in the air forever. Right. The series has been done for sixteen years. It's not coming back. But what leads me to think that he died is because the star fell. Yeah. Also, um, wait, did it show like a star falling out of the sky? Right. No, now? Yeah, the star go it, out. It, right. It, yeah, go out or fall. I'm not. I don't remember. Yeah, but like the it pans, pans all the way mm -hmm. up, and then you see stars, and then there's one that's flickering, and then it either goes out or it like drops. Mm -hmm. And oh. then that I forgot his name, Old Bull. I think it is the prophecy guy. Is just yeah. he's like T today his star will fall kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, to right. Jet. But the thing is, I feel like Spike dying has a certain importance to it. Like he almost needs to die in order to stay in theme with the show, and that's. You can't run away forever. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you're going to carry that weight. It will come back to you. And as much as Spike might try to distract himself, at the end of the day, what he knows that he had to do was show down with Vicious. And he knows that it was only going to go one way. And that's, they're both going to die. Because they're both matched in skill, just about, where Vicious is fucking deflecting bullets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But 
the thing is, like, yeah, that's that's the important thing as to why he died. And this entire show up until that has all just been a dream in a way. Like everything, all the adventures he's been on on the Bebop with the crew, it's all just a passing daydream compared to the nightmare that is his like actual life that catches up to him. And why this is important to the movie is that like okay, when you get when you when you see the movie and you know okay, this was made in two thousand one or mm-hmm. whatever, like after the series is done, and you know that it's not a piece of closure to the movie where or to the series rather where. It says, okay, here's what happens. This is an epilogue. Here's some extra content for you. What's important is that some people actually debate that the bulk of the movie itself was a dream. I don't necessarily believe that, but I think the last scene of the movie, if I remember correctly, is Spike lying down on the couch and just like reflecting on like the notion of dreams and dreaming because the main villain in the movie, he's afflicted by this condition where he's constantly in a half state of being in a, in a, in a dream almost where he's hallucinating and seeing all these butterflies Mm -hmm. and he can't control it and he can't get away from it. And like, he knows that the only way for him, for any of it to stop is for him to die. Yeah. And Spike relates to that. And he relates to that villain because Spike too is in a dream of his own. He is hallucinating in his own way where he thinks he can get away from his past with the syndicate. And he thinks that, he can maybe live a normal life or care about people other than like Julia, maybe. But it ultimately does all come back to him and he's got to wake up. The he's text at the end weight. of the movie, instead of saying, see you space cowboy, it yeah. says, are you living in the real world? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. that just kind of ties into that even more. So those are my thoughts on like the end, basically. Right. I got to say that one of my favorite scenes is in the last episode of Cowboy. Yeah. When Spike returns to the Bebop for one last time. Yeah. Yeah. And he has a he has a talk like a, just a casual conversation with Jet. Jet makes a joke about some guy, and they're like, "It's just an analogy to the, for to the two of them. for not the two of them and not being able to get over what you're doing." Like, yeah. it's a story about some guy having to do something, and somebody asks him why, and he's like, "I don't know. It's just what I have to do." Some yeah, shit like that, yeah. <laughs> which is just what Spike's doing. It's like Jet asks him, "Like, uh, I got to know, was it for the girl?" Yeah, yeah, and he's like she's gone she's, yeah so exactly. it's not about it's julia a, it's anymore. a point of pride yeah almost it's like and it, right after that actually is like the more poignant scene which is when spike talks to Faye, and Faye's like tearing up for the first time yeah. it's the first time she shows real emotion besides when she's looking at her own past <laughs> or her bank account or her bank account she says like uh don't do this like you don't have to go exactly there's no need and spike just gets real close to her and he's like look into my eyes one, one of them fake. is fake <laughs> I've been looking at the past, or I've been seeing the past in one eye this entire time. Yeah. And it's so Mm -hmm. fucked up. Yeah. Like, it's it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shook me up. So, (laughs) I want to just go back to the movie for for one second, which is like, one thing I really liked about the movie, or my my favorite scene in the movie, was when Spike and uh, Elektra were both in in prison, Yeah, and they have that that heart-to-heart. And, you know, Spike says, like, did you did you love him? Uh, what was the bad guy's name again? Vincent? Something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, Vincent. yeah Vincent. Yeah. And then she says, like, I don't know. Like, I, I felt I just like never felt things before. I had this wrenching feeling. I and it just like tore my heart out. And then she says, like, have you ever felt this way? And he says, like, I have. And then he talks about how he wasn't ever scared of anything. And he wasn't scared of dying until he met someone yeah julia yeah right and then he says like this he's like i've never told anyone that before but it was really great to get such an a blatant window into how spike feels about julia right to just like Mm -hmm. vocalize that for for a moment right and it really i guess does a lot to to show spike's motivation throughout the whole series so it 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 enhanced uh it it so much yeah in that scene I i that scene was like beautiful yeah to me another cool thing he says to that character is uh i love the kind of woman that can kick my ass yes oh, dude, i loved that yeah i loved uh, that oh boy uh, 
Okay, so I got a couple points to say about the movie very quickly. Yeah. You get to see a lot of Spike's fighting style, which is like Bruce Lee. It's all Kung like Fu. suave and yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Like fantastically animated and everything. Yeah. The opening scene is like in a convenience store where they're taking down right. a bunch of baddies. I and love it's, that. It's really cool. So I just said good. baddies. That's baddies. so stupid. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that sucked was that it didn't have the theme song of Cowboy in it. Yeah. It started right. with like this weird opening where it looks like New York and everybody looks yeah. like they're, <laughs> they were animated, like traced over Soul real life footage. Like, yeah. Of, yeah, I yeah. wrote that. I was like, is this like a 1980s New York documentary? Exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. We get to see like a whole Middle Eastern civilization of people, which kind of like it didn't go against the the right. aspect of like the series where it's like nobody belongs anywhere. Because yeah, yeah, it yeah. showed like this was the most of belonging somewhere that it ever showed. It was also, in the movie. this is on Mars, not even yeah, on Earth. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Oh, yeah. Jet makes like a comment in the movie saying that. Uh, their whole group is odd and useless, <laughs> saying that like everybody go- comes and goes as oh, they please. I yeah. have that quote. Yeah. that says, "I wonder what you call this kind of relationship. There isn't any camaraderie. There isn't really a bond here. Everyone just does what they want to do and then come back whenever they feel like it and then take yeah. off again." Yeah, <laughs> it's really true. Though. Yeah, it's like it a series. It. Do you remember when Faye runs away in the series and goes to a planet full of men that are all criminals? Yeah, and then she oh, comes yeah. back to the ship and she's like, "That planet wasn't even that bad." It's like, <laughs> "Why did you come back?" Yeah, it's because you need us. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. None um, of them will ever admit that they actually all deeply need one another to get mm-hmm. through. Like, exactly. Their days. Yeah, and they all like they try to approach things by themselves, but then they all end up calling each other in for backup. Kind of. Right. I guess that's like almost any buddy cop show, but still. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that that's like a big moment now to to jump to uh, to the last few episodes of the show. Mm-hmm. I thought was really interesting. So at the end of uh, episode twenty four. Yeah, is the real folk where we see is where we see the departure of Ed. of of Ed and Ayn and and Ayn and initial like seemingly Faye, right? Mm-hmm. So that was really interesting because the show starts with Jet and Spike. Yeah, and the first two episodes are pretty brutal, like as we talked about. Mm-hmm. So with Ayn going uh, with Ed and Ayn going, I knew like this is this is going to be like kind of like a serious kind of it's ending, right? right? Heart, like yeah. We can't have comedic relief anymore. This is going to be like serious. It's going to kind of wrap things up and it's going to, I like, I figured it had to be, yeah, but like vicious and, and Julia and really like yeah. high up that stuff. Right. And Faye was gone too. At the end of 24, she runs to her home and it's not there. And then she just lies on the ground, which itself was, I guess like this heartbreaking, heartbreaking yeah. moment. And I think, you know, I thought to myself like, Oh, I guess that's it for them mm-hmm. and they're you know, done, this, yeah. the show will you know end the way it started with with these two characters right uh but Faye coming back is like hugely important like as you said like we never see Faye express any gratitude or or, or admiration to the the crew members of the bebop and in that scene and especially not spike and in that scene she's like begging Spike not to go because she realizes that like she needs them and this is like her life now. Yeah. yeah. Like she, yeah, exactly. she's, there's nothing for her. She anymore. says she remembers most of what happened to her uh-huh. and there's still nowhere for her to go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And she, so she realizes that that's, yeah, she wants to be with, with the bebop and that's like a, a yeah, it's scene. heartbreaking, man. I want to ask you guys about what you think about the tagline at the end of every episode. See you space, space samurai. <laughs> yeah. See you space cowboy. See you space samurai. Uh, are you living in the real world? Yeah. Uh, what are the other ones? There's a couple. Uh, There's a couple. Something in about there. being a beast is one of them. Yeah. Like, what do you think? Does see you space cowboy have like a significance at all? There is that time when the cowboy guy who looks like Spike says it to him. He says see yeah, you space yeah, cowboy, and then that's the episode where it's like see you space samurai because yeah. he's done with the cowboy shtick and he wants to be a samurai yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> and you see him. Oh, there's one that says life is but a dream. That's in the mushroom right, right, episode. Yeah. 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 Is there, like, some significance there? Like, deeper... I don't know. See you, Space Cowboy? Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that it draws attention to, like, that... To the to the fact that they are Space Cowboys and that they live freely and kind of do what they want and they're kind of... Like, if you hadn't already made that connection that, mm-hmm. like, this is the Wild West in space, that kind of might hammer it home a bit more literally. Right. Um, also that it's just kind of a nice sort of, like welcoming like you know it's always going to end on something like sea right. space even cowboy. if it's like the whether or not it's a funny episode or a really sad episode yeah. it always ends with like something, something similar like that. to yeah sea space cowboy so that's 
kind of nice in a way. Almost like they all end in the same or similar way so that you kind of like forget about what happened in an episode and move on to the next one. Yeah. Because it, it's like an end of the chapter, you, like Finn. I feel like you almost get like the same feeling at the end of every episode in a way where nothing is necessarily wrapped up nicely and mm-hmm. you might have been sad or like happy at some point in the episode, but yeah. it always boils down to this nice sort of conclusion feeling right. when you see that frame. Right. About the different episodes, one thing I also wanted to mention was it was really cool that not only were the, you know, it was it was episodic, so different subject or like different subject matter of, of, of each episode, different characters, but every episode had very different tones. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah like, definitely. That was like such a really cool, refreshing thing to do. And like art wise, it was different too, right? It's, it's not like just it like, had like the same like color wash over the whole thing. Consistently beautiful though. Absolutely, One of the yeah. the best looking anime yeah, I've ever looks seen. Great. Full mm-hmm. stop. Like Spike is essentially like two colors. Yeah, but I like that his hair is green half the time. Wait, what? Is yeah. It? Oh, I guess yeah. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Like his suit is like almost all one shade of blue. Yeah. But it looks really cool somehow. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should wrap up our thoughts mm-hmm. on Cowboy. What do you guys have to say? Let's hear it. Brennan? Cowboy Bebop. I, I fully understand and embrace it as a classic. I might go so far as to put it in my top five anime of all time. Mm -hmm. And I know some of you are rolling your eyes right now because, duh, it is a classic. Of course, it it should be number one. I didn't grow up with Cowboy Bebop. It's like, it's astounding that a show that I'm new to in this regard was able to move me to the degree that it did. It just goes to show that it it's timeless. It's timeless and it's amazing on all fronts. It tells one of the best stories I've ever encountered in anime so far. Um, It broke my heart. It made me really happy. I loved it. I think I can agree with all of that. Yeah. I love the show. Yeah. I think it's fucking amazing. Um, I don't think I would recommend it to somebody who's first watching anime. Which is weird because a lot of people jump into anime. With Cowboy, Cowboy. yeah. (laughs) It's like, like, what? It's not like such an easygoing, easy to watch show. You need to like put part of your head into it and really like take it yeah, away with you for sure like outside of the show watching experience you need to think about it later so like most definitely that's worth thinking about uh one thing i want to bring up is that in the middle of a lot of the episodes mm-hmm. it says a quote in the screen and i want to oh, read yeah. that quote <laughs> so it says and i quote then in 2071 in the universe mm-hmm. in bounty hunters who are gathering in spaceship bebop will play freely without fear of risky things they must create new dreams and films by breaking traditional styles. The work, which becomes a new genre itself, will be called Cowboy Bebop. Damn. If that ain't the fucking truth. That <laughs> seems like almost scripture. Yeah. Written both about the characters in the show and the creators of the show. Yeah, and mm-hmm. what they like, wanted it to be. They will create a genre <laughs> in itself. <laughs> Wait, really quick before we wrap up forever. The music fucking blew my fucking head off dude yeah uh one of the best theme songs of all time one of the best soundtracks of all time yeah i've like i think the entire soundtrack is something like six hours or something like that Mm. i found myself listening to it over and over and over and over in like the days and weeks passing my like conclusion of cowboy right not just because i liked it in the context of the show it's just the most crazy out there um, like swing jazz. I don't even know brass style yeah. music. It's so cool. It's amazing. Yeah. Just it's before we finish off, I should say yeah. I've seen the show twice now. Brennan, you twice or three I've, times? I've seen it. Yeah, like twice about. And I, this is my first time uh, watching it. And now carried away with your final impressions. Yeah. So so first, uh, I agree with everything you, uh, you guys said. Uh, nailed it, uh, Brennan and Sean. And so one of the things you you mentioned was. This is not uh, something someone should watch when they're just getting into anime. And I definitely agree with that because I did try to watch it a couple years ago, I guess, when I started to get into anime. And because it starts so slow, yeah, it was like really hard for me to get over the hump. And I initially I, had, I didn't have the intention of not watching it anymore. I just like slowly drifted away from it. And then I only got back to it now. Mm -hmm. uh but it's it's such an important anime and uh there's like nothing nothing like it it's like yeah the level uh to the level that they've like built these characters is just 
is just incredible to me. It's it's crazy, and it feels so much like real life. And I've never really, I guess, had this much sympathy for any other characters I've I've seen in any any of the shows. Definitely, yeah. It's one of those things that you hear it's a classic all the time, and mm-hmm. then I went to watch it, and it was undisputed. Yeah, like, yeah. There's no way I could even question it question there's, there's that there's no yeah. valid yeah. critique <laughs> maybe in the first couple episodes sure but like once you get to the end it's like if you don't agree i don't know who you are yeah, yeah I, like <laughs> i don't just write paragraphs after i watch something yeah like, usually but i was like i need to just start writing right now yeah like that's how i guess it just like felt like i need to make sure that i have all these impressions out <laughs> so i could talk about them with you guys yeah, yeah. definitely uh mm-hmm. i would totally watch it again that being said i would probably want to give it uh, time. some time yeah right uh the great thing about it is because every episode is so unique you know there's a lot of things to forget and to like rediscover i think you know these like definitely yeah yeah it's just like i watched the show like i don't know two three weeks ago yeah so it's been like a minute and just like going over the notes that i had before looking at like some of the episode descriptions even like talking to you guys and hearing your descriptions of like episodes that stood out and stuff it it's just it's like oh i forgot that that incredible thing happened because it was so self-contained in this like big sprawling saga of a right. of like a beautiful show yeah i guess we should wrap it up yeah so as usual if you've listened so far thank you for listening um we appreciate it uh we do have places for you to contact us and reach out to us and give us your thoughts on our thoughts or just the series as a whole Sean, hit us with them. Yeah, you can contact us on Facebook and Twitter. We're at Shonen Chumps on both. Yeah. And you can email us at shonenchumps at gmail.com. The way to listen to the podcast, I don't know how you're listening to it right now, but thank you. You can do that on YouTube or iTunes podcasts or the Google Play podcasts. I think that's what it's called. Store, something like that. SoundCloud yeah. if you even want to. Ew. <laughs> It's funny because it sounds like we're doing a riff like at the end of a Cowboy Bebop episode, like making fun of our own show. Hey, Sean, what are you doing there? Let me let me get in on this. <laughs> uh, yeah, goddamn. Oh, one of the episodes ends when um, Edward leaves. It says like, "See you, space cowgirl, someday, yeah, somehow, some, yeah, or something yeah, like that." Whenever I see you, what a great, shit. what a great ending. It's really well, good. I guess we'll sign off. See you, space cowboy. See you, space cowboy. See you, space cowboy. See you, space cowboy.